Good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. That's right, you know what today is all about. Today is all about a head-to-head. -head. Two Nakiris. This is the first time that we're doing a head-to-head -head where we're not comparing one knife style against another such as a Petty versus a Yanagiba or a 87mm Petty against a 240mm Gyoto against a Pomelo. Now if you do like these head-to-heads, I do have a playlist specific to them. So have a look up here or in the description below. Today's head-to-head -head is going to be between this Fujiwara Denka 165mm Nakiri and this Masutani 165mm Nakiri. Now if you like what you see, my name is Frank Wall and this channel is all about knife knowledge, reviews, unboxings and head to heads. So alright, let's get right into it. Before I go ahead and show you what these two bad boys are all about, let's talk a little bit more about the knives. So what you have in front of you here, starting with the Masutani is you have a Masutani with a mono oak handle. It's made out of VG1 gold steel. It has a HRC of roughly 60. It weighs in at just 140 grams. It's 52 millimeters tall at the heel and three millimeters thick at the spine. And against this Masutani, what you have is, of course, this one needs no introduction, but the Fujiwara Denka 165mm Nikiri. The handle, this one is made out of bog oak with spalted turquoise bolster. It's made out of Aogomi Super with a stainless steel cladding. The HRC is closer to 64 to 65, so quite a bit, quite a bit harder than the Masutani. It's roughly 55 millimeters at the heel. 55 millimeters tall, that is, three millimeters thick at the spine, and weighs quite a bit more than Masutani at 192 grams. In terms of their balance points, balance point for Masutani is right about here. So almost quite forward heavy, probably because that oak handle is so light. And the balance point for the Nakiri is right about here, which is actually quite fantastic because right here is where the finger choil is. Alright, so what you're going to see next on screen is I've pitted both of these against the same ingredients. I will put up top left of the screen which knife is being used in case you get confused as we go between footage. And I did this a little bit differently. When I filmed the footage weeks ago, I actually decided immediately after to kind of just voice memo my thoughts to see what I thought about the knife's performance in the heat of the moment. But, as you'll see at the end of the video, we'll come back and I'll still talk about which one I think might, might reign supreme and why. So without further ado, enjoy the food demos. Alright, so we're doing a bit of a head-to-head -head with a Denka Nikiri 165 and a Masutani Nikiri 165. So far when I did the tofu prep, both knives slid very well for that horizontal cut. The Denka seemed to cut a little bit better. Um, but either way, I'd say they were pretty much a tie there. When it came to the cucumber, I think the Denk and the Kiri did a little bit of a better job. Probably that weight when cutting through the layers. Now we gotta remember that the layers are slimy, they're aqueous. I'm putting stack layers on top of each other that don't have a lot of friction. And so maybe that weight in that case is in favor of cutting a stacked uh, cucumber.
And on the carrot test, this, this was really curious. So the Masutani, when cutting a carrot, which isn't very large, and both knives got carrots of similar sizes, when cutting the small carrot in half before peeling, um, it wedged, and then wedged really bad. It wedged like a knife um, who has a bevel that's a little bit too thick, a little bit like an ax, a uh, convex grind. But it did fairly well in both making carrot planks and then cutting those planks into um, the little strips. What do we call them again, Becky? Julienne. <laughs> Julienne, thanks. And so I figured that Nikiri would do better, and it did do better in that initial cutting a carrot in half. It did not wedge, again, not sure if that has to do with um, the weight of the Denko, which is quite a bit heavier than the Masutani. But then where things got really curious is when I was squaring off the carrot, when I was planking the carrot, and when I was julienning the carrot, the Denka did feel like it was struggling quite a bit more to bite into the carrot to cut down. In this case, it did not appear that the weight of the Denka was in favor of slicing the carrot. And what I did afterwards, actually, let me just back up a few seconds. Um, the carrot also stuck quite a bit more to the Denka than the Masutani. Now the Denka is hand hammered and that's supposed to help with food release, but it is Kurochi and I always said that Kurochi does make food stick to it a little bit more, not sure why, but anyhow, that, that's an observation. And the second observation is I was just curious, I took a look at the grinds again, and the Masutani is infinitely thinner at the choil than the Denka. It also appears to be super flat. It has really nice flat bevels, and the Denka, though it hasn't been used a whole lot since we purchased it, I feel like it could probably use some thinning. Um, the bevels don't seem even, even in terms of the grind, it doesn't 100% seem like it might be 50-50. So this might be why it struggled with the carrot, but I'm not sure. In cutting the mango, the Denka did far better. I mean, I say far better, they, they were almost equatable, um, but it seemed like the Denka just cut into the skin better, went through the flesh better again. Is that a factor of the weight, potentially?
And then finally, this I think is really what determined to me, which is the better than the curries when we kind of take a look at the performance and sum up all the ingredients in the cherry tomato test. I barely held the Danka, I did the pinch grip, but then I released the three last fingers from my hand and it just glided through it like it was butter. With the Masutani, as you'll see in the video, that first cut was almost a bit embarrassing. I almost had to saw until I reached the perfect spot for it to cut through and then every subsequent cut um, was a little bit easier, but still not nearly as easy as it was with the Denka. The comparison, or at least what we need to consider as well, is that the Masutani is edge out of the box, but it is a lot thinner. It has flatter bevels, thinner ground. Whereas the Denka, I had just put, I think a Shapton Glass 6K finish on it and a JNAT micro bevel, but it is much thicker, both at the spine and behind the edge, and the bevels aren't flat. All things to consider. See you later. All right, guys, we're back. What did you think about that food demo? I thought it was pretty freaking awesome because I put these two against quite a few vegetables and fruits and vegetables and fruits that I, that I would typically find within my weekly diet of cooking food. And so, of course, according to the voice memo, it sounds like I was kind of saying that the Denk and the Kiri should be the winner. But now that it's been weeks, and now that I've had more conversations with people, and now that this is the first time we're doing a head-to-head -head against two knives that are actually the same knife style, I think it gets a little bit more complex than just saying, ah, the Denk and the Kiri did better on the potato than the Masutani. No, no, you saw a series of vegetables and fruits. And so maybe we're going to break it down into two pieces. The winner for performance, in my opinion, the Denk and the Kiri. However, not everyone can or wants to spend hundreds of dollars on a Denka Nikiri. And so the other winner, in my opinion, because I was quite surprised, this Masutani VG1 steel, as you saw in the food demo, super, super surprising at a fraction of the cost of this Denka Nikiri, probably about 25% of the price of this Denka Nikiri. And um, I just gotta say, it was a pleasure to use. It is so light in the hands. It does have a thinner grind. We do know that the Denkas, doesn't matter whether it's in Kiri or Gyoto, in terms of fit and finish, people like to call it wabi-sabi. I'm gonna be honest, it's not wabi-sabi. When you use the word wabi-sabi, it's like saying uh, controlled chaos, right? You try to put almost a positive spin to it. It leaves to be desired. No one wants to spend hundreds of dollars on a knife, take a look at the bevel, and feel like it immediately needs to be thinned. This has a better bevel grind and all than the Stenka. The Stenka performed better, in my opinion, for most of the ingredients, right? Clearly in some of the food demos, it was all about the Masutani. I believe that the weight is part of it and I believe that the choice of steel, hardness, um, and thinness is another aspect of why sometimes the Nikiri seem to perform better. But if you want a really good Nikiri between these two that performs really well, and in some cases even outperforms the Denka Nikiri, and the choice is really obvious, you're gonna go Masutani. So I know that when we kind of try to decide like who's the winner, um, it's a, gonna be a bit subjective, even though we're trying to do objective tests, but it's not a very controlled, scientifically rigorous experiment, right? We're just having fun, and I'm telling you about how I feel. If I talk to you about how I feel, even when I'm looking at the video, then that's not objective, that's subjective. So even if I'm not pleasing all of you by saying, both of these are winners, but in their own categories, I think that's still the important takeaway is that there are multiple categories when it comes to, Frankie, is this nice valuable? Is it worth it? And I always ask people, what are you after? Worth is gonna be different. We'll eventually have a River Jump Santoku knife review video. That one's gonna be really fun. That one's going to probably get me a lot of hate because I'm gonna be real honest about, is it worth it? We'll talk about worth during that video. But if you did enjoy this video and you wanna see more of what I'm up to, please feel free to subscribe, hit that notification bell button so that you're up to date with the latest videos. And until then, see you next time.